So uh, my name is Dennis. I uh, started Ignite two years ago, and I'm now a core contributor to Ignite, and I also work as blockchain engineer at Strangelove Ventures. So what is Ignite? Well, Ignite is a company, and we specialize on um, accelerating the development of the Internet of Blockchains. And the way we do this is by writing software, uh, specifically Ignite CLI, and we also have an accelerator program. And Ignite CLI is something I will be talking today about. So Ignite CLI started essentially because Cosmos SDK, even though we love Cosmos SDK and it's a great piece of technology, it was very difficult to start working with Cosmos SDK and start building applications. I remember the time where there was no scaffolding tooling at all. There was one, but it wasn't wasn't very good, and the the blockchain it produced didn't didn't compile. So you, you had to spend hours uh, figuring it out. So we were on a mission to improve developer experience of building Cosmos SDK blockchains and making it accessible to people who would otherwise maybe not even spend time um, working uh, on, on blockchains, right? Because uh, very often people um, start uh, building blockchains on hackathons where you have very lim limited time, and we wanted to make uh, blockchain development accessible for web developers and basically anyone. So we started working on Ignite CLI two years ago, and by now it has been used by uh, dozens of chains in production, uh, hundreds upon hundreds of projects were built um, uh, as test projects, tutorials, and almost every day we have three to five new uh, tutorial projects completed, pushed to GitHub that were scaffolded uh, with Ignite CLI. So let's kind of look into the CLI in more detail. It's a binary that you install in your machine, and it gives you a set of commands that you can use, well, first of all, to create a chain, for example, right, Ignite Scaffold Chain uh, Planet, and uh, shortly you get a new Cosmos SDK blockchain. Then you can run another command, and it will start a blockchain node locally with one validator, but it's enough for you to start building. So you basically, with just a few commands, you get a full development setup running, and you can modify your code and almost immediately see the changes because it automatically compiles your blockchain uh, in a single binary, and um, you s you can you can interact with it immediately. So it also comes with a set of features that are useful for client developers because we know it's never just about writing the blockchain code. You also want your web application to talk to your blockchain. You want um, maybe a mobile application. So that's what Ignite is built for. So we already heard about Cosmos, but I'm going to uh, mention it anyways, right? Cosmos is a huge ecosystem with over 50 blockchains um, that interact with each other. And uh, the ecosystem as a whole secures billions of dollars worth of value. And it's uh, a very great ecosystem to, to be part of. And what I love about Cosmos on a personal level, I guess it's the diversity, right? So there's no single chain that is better than others, that is more important. Uh, you can come up with an idea, implement it, and it will be part of Cosmos alongside other established projects. So I think this is a very important idea. It's a very simple one, but um, in Cosmos, you build, you can build a sovereign blockchain, right? And that's a distinguishing characteristic where in other ecosystems, you have a single chain and you're building smart contracts on that chain. In Cosmos, you can build your own thing. Uh, you, you don't even have to connect it to anyone, uh, to any other chain. You don't have to pay anyone, of course. You, you can do your own thing. And of course, you can also have smart contracts, but the fact that you can build your sovereign chain, and that's what Cosmos SDK was, was um, built for, uh, that's for me is a defining characteristic. And Ignite, yeah, well, before, um, before that, that's how you can visualize um, a Cosmos blockchain. 
um, as Marco said, it's a modular system where you have a bunch of standard modules that use each other's functionality, and um, each module has state and it has messages that trigger state transitions, and you have users that broadcast these messages that get routed. Uh, well, they broadcast transactions that contain messages that get routed to modules. And of course, you can build your own modules, right? Ignite just helps you do that much, much faster and uh, without, uh, without you having to write that much boilerplate code. So with a single command, you, you get a new chain and it uses the latest version of Cosmos SDK. It comes with IBC, so it comes with everything, everything you need. The next command will most likely what you want to do is create your own module. Uh, many applications have three, four, however many modules because you want to separate the responsibility and um, modularize your application. You don't want to put it, everything in one module, right? So you can do that. You can, if you want your, if you, if you know that your module will be ABC compatible, uh, you can use a flag and, and it will be uh, generated with ABC compatibility. And this is where Ignite goes kind of further than that because uh, what I wanted Ignite to do from the very beginning is allow people to quickly get something up and running, even if, if it, if it, even if it wasn't for production, just so that they can learn more about how Cosmos SDK works and to shorten the feedback loop, right? To make the feedback loop very, very short so that a person can just execute one command and he or she has a, um, a, a set of tools uh, to interact with their chain. So for example, your chain uh, might, you, you might want to build a DEX, for example, but um, the first blockchain you build will probably not be a DEX, right? We, we take a simple concept like blog posts and you, um, you run Ignite scaffold list post uh, and then you provide fields and what you get uh, is a post type, but also you get all the functionality to create, read, update, and delete posts, right? And everyone knows how blog works. Now it's, it's, um, uh, it's a blog on a blockchain. So you can map what you already know to what you don't know yet, which is Cosmos SDK and how it works, and you f can figure it out. Sometimes it's much easier than going through a tutorial because you, uh, you map the knowledge that you already have about a concept like a blog to a new framework like Cosmos SDK. Of course, the same command can be used in production because the pattern is very popular and very widely used, right? Um, that's how blockchain, uh, that's how databases would work, right? You, you want to create data, delete data, and so on. Sometimes, of course, well, most of the time, probably you want to create code for individual messages because not all applications how, uh, follow the CRUD pattern. Um, you can use Ignite for that. So um, I think due to how verbose Cosmos SDK is, each message, you need like 300 lines of code for a message, probably maybe maybe, maybe less. But in any case, that's something you don't want to do your, yourself, right? And uh, uh, for example, I uh, was working on a chain the other day and uh, there were 12 messages. So this really simplifies the, and streamlines the development process. Uh, it's important when you're building something for production, but it's hugely important also when you're like just prototyping something. And I'm going to show later on how it can be used. Um, of course, Ignite doesn't know what exactly you want to do with when you write a comment in this example. So you, you have to fill in the blanks and write the custom logic that actually implements your business logic, but yeah, and then you can start your chain locally, uh, which just one command. Um, if you use Cosmos SDK, you need to execute many more commands. You typically put it in the shell file here. You don't need to worry about any of that. Um, Ignite chain serve and you got a chain running locally for development purposes with um, automatic code reloading, which is very handy. So, Ignite, as I mentioned previously, it's not only for building blockchain, but it's also for 
for interacting with uh, with blockchains, right? We have a Cosmos client library. If you're building an application in Go, you might want to use that. If you're building a web application, we have advanced TypeScript client generation. So uh, it automatically generates uh, functions to broadcast transactions that contain messages specific to your blockchain. It simplifies querying the chain. So if you're building, and most likely you are building a, a web app for your chain, that's a great tool to use. So yeah, this is a very short example of, of what you would write if you wanted to use Cosmos Client. Very short and simple, and uh, you get, you get um, uh, output on the right, right? Very easy to uh, broadcast a transaction, for example, for create post. Of course, it's very useful to not only see the source code, right, but I'll also have a web application that interacts with, with your chain. Some, uh, even if you're not planning on, on using it for production, uh, it's useful because you can, uh, well, play with your chain. You can uh, use it as a foundation for your production app, but also a learning tool to know how, how you can build one yourself. So Ignite comes with a front-end template that you can use that comes out of, out of the box. So yeah, for generating a TypeScript client, there's just one command. You don't need to set up anything. Um, it works with any Cosmos SDK chain. If it doesn't, it's a bug. But yeah, we're, we're aiming to support all of the chains. Um, so yeah. So what's next for Ignite? Uh, well, um, there are so many things we can build and so many functionality, so much functionality we can add to make development life, developers' life easier. Um, I think importing external modules and making, um, so Cosmos SDK always kind of claimed to be Ruby and Rails of blockchain development, but it, uh, it was missing the, the module installation part. Uh, it, it's notoriously hard. Well, it's not hard, but it's definitely difficult for a new newcomer developer to add a module, and um, hopefully that that will be um, that will be improved. And having multi-validator test nets is something we want to add as well, because um, many people have to write Docker files and orchestrate launches of their own test net locally. Um, the reason why it was done for a single node initially because that's kind of typically what you just need, right? You, you only need one, one validator locally. You can, unless your application is very specific and you want to test it uh, with multiple validators, uh, it's much easier to do uh, automatic code reloading and preservation of state because that's something you, won't, uh, you might want to have, right? So instead of pre-populating -pop uh, state every time the state is preserved when you run Ignite chain serve. So, but multi-validator local testnet is nice, and of course there are a bunch of other things we want. But um, yeah, the next big feature is uh, commands to launch new network into production. Can't tell you more right now about this, but this is this is coming in the future. So yeah, um, thanks for your attention. Um, if you want to know, know more, go to github.com ignite slash CLI, visit our Discord. We're very active. If people have questions, we typically answer them very quickly. And uh, follow us on Twitter. So that's the end of the presentation part. Now, um, now demo. Demos, live demos typically go very smoothly, right? They literally nothing can go wrong here. So. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, first of all, hopefully it's yeah, it should be visible. So Ignite is just a single binary, and we decided to put it in in a single binary a long time ago because if um, some fe some features require um, Node.js, some features require Proto-C, uh, and asking people to install um, different programs, different binaries. Um, is a very bad developer experience, whereas downloading a single binary is a good developer experience, especially if you have a good connection to the internet, which in our case we don't. But you can imagine this slide, slide, uh, this this progress bar goes 
to the end eventually. But I have Ignite already installed, uh, so I can show you how it works. So Ignite has a bunch of commands, and we'll go through some of them. Um, Ignite, scaffold, chain. And let's say we are using, uh, we want to build uh, an exchange. So it takes a while to scaffold, even though we're just spitting out a template, because we also uh, install dependencies and making sure that proto-c uh, dependencies are there. So um, more than git clone happens under the hood. But yeah, in just a couple of seconds, you get a new blockchain. You can, can open up. And yeah, it's pretty standard. Cosmos is decay blockchain. Um, I'm not going to go, of course, through everything here, but um, if you run Ignite Chain Serve using the R flag, R flag to to start it from scratch, just in case there was any state before, and it installs dependencies, builds protofiles, initializes the chain, and yeah, it's running. So uh, right now, with just two commands, you have a lo local blockchain running. And uh, the cool thing is that you can modify it, and it, it it's yours, uh, yours blockchain, right? It's, um, it's not Gaia, it's not Osmosis, it's your blockchain that you can hack around. Uh, it uses config file to initialize. You can see Alice and Bob were, uh, were created as users, has one validator, and yeah, you can customize the behavior of Ignite with this simple config YAML file, but that's not what we want to do right now. What we want is, um, let's say, you you want to add a feature to it, so Ignite scaffold, I can just say S, Ignite scaffold list of pools. So if it's an exchange, it might have a pool, um, a liquidity pools, right? Or even before this, you have an exchange module, but let's say you realized you wanted your module to be IBC compatible and some logic will be in the exchange module, but you also want a DEX module. So you can do that. Ignite scaffold module, DEX, and uh, with a flag, IBC. So this command modified the source code. It created a DEX directory in the X directory. X stands for modules confusingly enough, but you get a new directory with boilerplate code. So uh, you could could have copied it from from anywhere, but here the name is ev everywhere, like the, the, the module is dex, and it's also wired up to, um, to app.go, and you get proto files, so you, you get a bunch of functionality out of the, out of the box here. Um, okay, so that's good. If you go inside, you can see that it's IBC compatible, it has module ibc.go. Now let's commit this to git. Can't type module. Okay, and now let's say you want to add some functionality to it. So ignite scaffold list of pools, and let's say each pool has an amount, and amount is in coins and it might have a height. I don't know what height will be for, but um, you can see it. Um, you can specify a type. You can uh, uh, skip that, and this will assume that this is a string, but yeah, we can do that. And uh, say you want that in the module called dex. So this com command modified the dex module, and we'll go through what it what it did exactly so I, I when I when I look at Cosmos SDK blockchains what I like to do first is go inside the proto directory because the proto file describe types that your application deals with so it's very easy to understand what's going on if you just read proto files right so we know that there is a type called pool and by convention and TX proto all messages that you are uh, module supports uh, are registered in the message service, so you can kind of understand what this module is for, right? You can create, update, and delete pools, and you can also query for them. So 
that's, that's like a table of contents for your blockchain. And if you go inside your X directory, inside the keeper method, you will, you will see message server file. And this file essentially implements what happens to the state when the message is processed. So when create pool message is processed, this code it gets executed and you can use that to actually learn how to build something like this, right? So it's, sometimes it's very handy to just create uh, a test chain, scaffold some stuff, look how it works, and then scaffold the same thing or something else in your chain that you're building for production. So now let's, yeah, now let's scaffold a message because not everything fits this crowd pattern. Um, we can, this is probably the, the functionality that is used more often um, because you need many messages if your blockchain is, uh, has a lot of features, right? So for each feature, you probably have like a couple of messages at least. So let's say uh, there's a message called add liquidity and it might have um, also an amount in coins and um, denom, it's gonna be a string. So you can, you can use more flags to customize how scaffolding happens. And Ignite, of course, complains that um, we didn't commit changes to, to Git. Let's do that. List of pools. And run it again. It's just convenient to see what f which files were changed. So we can see for a single message, just a few changes happened, right? In TX Proto, add liquidity was automatically added to the message service, which is very handy. You don't need to do this yourself. In the Dex module, we have a new file and it doesn't have much inside, but you kind of don't need to write that yourself, which is handy. And uh, now what we can do is start the chain again. So this will rebuild everything and let you um, play with your chain. Okay. By the way, we can uh, we can change config file and uh, let's add a new account called Frank. And when you save, it will automatically detect that the config file was changed, so and does the same thing with the source code. So you don't have to worry about re, uh, rerunning your chain again. So now let's use exchange exchange D um, that we have. So the whole chain is compiled into a single binary, and uh, that's well, that's Cosmos SDK feature. Um, but we can, if we type TX, we can. We can see all the modules, and DEX and Exchange are among those modules, and we can see what kind of functionality we already have. We have create pool, delete, date, and we can use that. All right, so let's create a pool. So it accepts an amount and height. Amount I know is in coins, so let's say 100 stake and height is just an integer, and we need to provide who we're broadcasting this transaction from. Let's use one of the accounts we have in config file, Alice. And yeah, that's how we created a pool. I mean, it doesn't implement any DEX functionality. You would have to do that yourself, but it, it had provides all the wiring for you. So if you now query for, for pools, you will see what you created, just pool. So yeah, with just a few commands, we already got, we already have a skeleton of your application. We can also um, add liquidity, use that command as well, liquidity. It's actually probably, probably gonna fail because 
types are different. Anyway, uh, it's not going to do anything because the keeper method is empty. But you, I think you, you can you get the point, right? You, um, you use ignite to create your chain, then scaffold all the skeleton code you you need. You don't want to write it yourself. Then you basically go into um, into the keeper methods and actually implement the logic that 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 you want. So, just kind of wrapping this up, let's see what else. So ignite generate lets you generate clients either um, in a TypeScript uh, or we'll, we also have Dart um, for mobile developers. Uh, we already uh, also have very extensive documentation. So Ignite Scaffold, help. You can read about how, how it all works. And uh, we also have a built-in relayer and um, a set of tutorials. So if you go to docs.ignite.com, you will find, I think, eight tutorials. One of them is IBC. So we included uh, a relayer into the Ignite distribution to make it easier for people to build IBC applications if that's what you want. Um, you can scaffold queries, messages, IBC packets. And um, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think we can um, open for questions. Yeah, thanks for the question. The question was, are we planning on doing something similar for smart contracts, uh, the same way we simplified and streamlined development of blockchains, will we do something for smart contracts? And this is a very good question uh, because I think the future where we have thousands of blockchains is something we actually want, right? So um, you can build smart contracts and deploy them to existing chains, but you can also have your own chain for your application. And this opens up many possibilities that you can't really get from a smart contracting platform. So it would have been a bleak future where we had thousands of blockchains if they weren't interconnected. But since they are interconnected, the difference is is big, but in a way it is, it is not that big because you can launch your application uh, with shared security, for example, or you can launch even a sovereign, ch if there are good tools, you can launch your sovereign chain. And for end users, it's, it's not gonna look all that different. They eventually will not know where their applications are running, whether they're contracts, whether they're chains. And um, writing your own chain definitely gives, your, gives you more control. So that's why Ignite is focusing on Cosmos SDK uh, we're not planning on focusing on smart contracts because you can any any application you might want uh, you might write uh, with Cosmosm you can do the same in Cosmos SDK and arguably it's easier. Um, so, but but what we want to do is of course Cosmosm is very popular. There are other solutions since many chains want Cosmosm. We probably would rather integrate with other tools that are built specifically for, for Cosmwasm or other smart contracting platforms and make it easier to include Cosmwasm in your chain, make it easier to use developer tooling for, for that platform. But I think like tools should, should specialize and Ignite definitely specializes on helping developers build their decentralized applications as sovereign blockchains and give all the control to developers. Any other questions? Yeah, thank you. The question was why build your own blockchain when you can build a smart contract? So uh, some of the reasons are more on the technical side. So of course we all know about UIDX and them moving to Cosmos and one of the reasons why they did what they did is as far as I understand, is you can't really build an order book uh, on uh, on the tech that they were um, using. Like like they they hit limitations and they wanted to have in memory um, uh, the logic of the order book in memory, which Tenement plus Cosmos's decay allows them to do this. Uh, sometimes you you don't want to be limited by 
the mechanisms of the chain that you deployed your contract to. Maybe you want your own governance, maybe you want your own token. Like from the, an economic point of view, um, most applications probably want their token. And when you launch your chain as a sovereign chain, you get the benefit of the utility of the token being for, like you can use it for staking, it's used for governance. So you, you get all these free use cases for your, for your token, which is good. And um, maybe you want to build a proof of authority chain. Maybe it's a private chain. Maybe you want to use uh, a different VM. Maybe you want to use a combination of things. You want to build some functionality in Cosmos SDK modules, then you want to add Cosmwasm and write contracts there. Maybe you want permission permission smart contracts. So like you can literally uh, you can literally do anything with with uh, a framework like Cosmos SDK, but Typically, you are limited when you're choosing um, to to build a smart contract. I mean, it's just a different paradigm, and the way I see it uh, is, smart contracts are like scripting, right? You you have a browser, like you can build a browser or like a Slack app, uh, application or Figma, right? Your own desktop application. Then you can add scripting capabilities to it, but you don't necessarily want your whole applications like all applications to be just scripted applications. I don't know. There are definitely advantages to writing smart contracts, upgradability, for example. So if you, wanna, if you want to have an admin that has control over the upgradability of a contract and not validators, then that's something easier to achieve um, by writing application as a smart contract um, because at the end of the day, if you're launching as a sovereign chain, you will have a most likely decentralized community of validators and stakers, right? And they will be the ones who are deciding what's going to happen with the chain. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so the question is like, is the process slower if you have to have find validators and have to worry about all of these things? It is and um, it's going to change. It's going to become much more simpler. And the, the, the difference between launching your chain and deploying a contract will be not as drastic as it is right now. Okay, well, uh, thanks so much, everyone. Then that's it, I guess.